And today we're discussing one of the topics that I always talk about, which is obviously going to be Wyckoff, but with a little <laughs> twist because today is going to be advanced Wyckoff theory. We will be doing, as always, everything to do with taking a look at the theory into the actual charts. And we'll also be looking at the live markets as well. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. My name's Thomas Atkinson on behalf of Pepperstone, and I'm joined by Tyrone Abella as always. Tyrone, how are you going today? Good. Thank you, Tom. And yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, we're talking about Tom's favorite topic today. So very, very cool. excited to see what he brings us today. We've got advanced technique with Wyckoff. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see him bring some of the stuff that he generally keeps a little bit of a secret to his um, yeah major community uh, to the live um, audience today. So it's going to be very interesting. You're going to get a sneak peek into what really goes on in the back of the mentoring that we generally do. So yeah, sit back and relax. <laughs> there'll, there'll, be a fu- there'll be a couple of top tips, a couple of top tips. So just before we get started, quick risk warning. See you in just a second. Okay, so mastering advanced Wyckoff analysis. Now, there will be some, I guess you would say, assumptions that you understand a little bit about Wyckoff today. We will go through the main three laws, but we'll be jumping into the charts predominantly and talking about some setups that we've seen recently talking about some tricks and tri- uh, trips and traps, I guess you would say, in terms of markets. And as always, Ty, this is all about how does the big market participants or how do these big traders actually position? In 2023, positioning became one of the bigger trade techniques. And in 2024, all the way through the next decade, the idea of knowing where the biggest trades are going to be is, is such an important concept. I'd also suggest that you may want to check out some of the other things we've seen before which is doing the volume profile analysis. It works really well, especially with Wyckoff, to create theories on where entries should be. As always, this can be applied to swing trading, day trading, and scalping. And generally, it comes from a top-down approach, which means that you understand what's happening on the higher timeframes, but that that can then give you great key levels to be looking at as a day trader or even scalper. So, Ty, Let's get into it and talk about the number one rule from Wyckoff. And that is, of course, successful tape reading is the study of force. It requires the ability for us to judge which side has the greatest pulling power. And one must have the courage to go with that side. Do remember that this is, in essence, pretty much all the great quotes, all the great uh, talk is about anything to do with markets usually go through this type of analysis. And the reason they do that is because When you're talking about positioning, you're talking about being able to spot a trend before it starts, you're going to have to have some courage. It's going to generally be going against the narrative. Recently, we saw a Bitcoin ETF come up and everybody was getting super hyped. Now, if you actually have a look at the left-hand side of the charts, and maybe what we'll do is we'll jump into that straight away here, and uh, we'll go into the charts just quickly and jump onto a Bitcoin chart. What you might notice about this Bitcoin chart is that we have this huge rally that came through all the way from back in October of last year. Now, the reason we want, and same with here in Ethereum, now the reason we want to bring that up is because what this is, is it's a buy the rumor and what we often call the sell the fact. And remember having the courage to go against the grain when everyone's crescendoing into feeling incredibly bullish in something can be very, very difficult. That's why we always use price action tie. Do you think price action is like probably one of the most important things that traders, especially people that have been used to macro and news and all these other things, um, it should should really start to pay a lot of attention to in the next coming years? Yeah, most definitely. I think it's always been very important, but I think in the in the coming years, especially, it's going to be the real driving force as to which direction the market's going to go in to give you the clue to get in in a timely manner. Now, the good thing about price action, no matter what strategy you're applying, whether it's you know volume profiles. Wyckoff, support and resistance patterns, everything uh, relies on price action to actually give you a signal. Like even if it's Elliott Wave, whatever it is that you use in the market, price action is extraordinarily important. So understanding it and, and really working with it, I think, Tom, is probably the key to it. I think understanding it is one thing, actually working with it and actually getting your trades to work with what's actually happening in the market rather than trying to fight it is probably the, the next most important thing, understanding and then using it to your advantage. Yes, understanding, using it to our advantage, gaining edge, and more importantly, figuring out which side has the greatest pulling power. So that's what Wyckoff was talking about and really was Economics 101, Ty. We'll just quickly go through here. Wyckoff summarized that if demand is outstripping supply, prices will rise. We already know that. 
If demand is less than supply, prices will drop, which sometimes does happen as well. And if demand was equaling supply, we would have no significant price change. Now, technically, that often brings what we call a sideways or range bound market, a channeling market. Now, actually, this is the best time to be looking for uh, some type of edge to be gained on markets. When markets are trending, they can be relatively easy to figure out what's going to happen. It's when a market goes sideways, we have to figure out who has the greatest pulling power. The second main law of Wyckoff was the law of cause and effect, and we've gone through this before, and it basically said that Wyckoff was looking at the difference between supply and demand and saying that they weren't random. Instead, they came after periods of market preparation. In Wyckoff's terms, a period of accumulation or distribution could cause an effect. So basically, you had the movement here and that whatever was going on here was probably a build of a position. And if it broke to the downside, then we were looking for, obviously, this was sellers. So therefore, this was the supply in terms of supply and demand, and the sellers were in control or the bears. And if it broke to the upside, then the bulls were in command. And what this allowed us to do is it allowed us to focus in on these areas, especially if markets pull back into those zones in the future, because it was basically saying, well, we know when the breakout happened, who was the winner? So we can already see where the largest positions were placed using some techniques, and therefore we might be able to gain advantage as scalpers and day traders in this market. The third law was the law of effort versus result. And this one is actually a, a very good one if you can get into it, thinking about it from a volume perspective. Wyckoff's third law stated that changes in the instrument's price were a result of an effort generally represented by trading volume. Now, Tyrone, we all know that if a market is coming down very heavily, just because it's coming down heavily doesn't necessarily mean there's a lot of trade volume. I always trap people with the exact same example, mm. which basically is two candles here. And I say, which one holds the biggest amount of volume? Which one has the largest trade in it? A or B? Well, if anyone in the chat could figure that out, then you'd be pretty smart because the answer is we don't know. And that's because even though this one, B, looks like it might have more trade being a bigger candle, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will. And actually what happens a lot of the time is when trends start and they break through, there isn't as much trade volume as you might think happening on these particular charts. So why is this all becoming very, very important? Just give me one sec, I'll just quickly put this in. Uh, basically, it's because when we're thinking about markets, we have to go with trade volume. Trade volume tells us a lot about where the biggest players are. If we have a consolidation like this that comes after a huge sell-off, then that probably means that it's it could be a buy. But if the volume is the same as the sell-off, that's a huge plus, isn't it, Ty? Oh, I believe you'll be back in a second. I can tell you it is a damn huge plus. It's a massive deal. So Wyckoff then theorized the idea of the composite man. So basically he created the idea that investors and traders should consider that the market was controlled by a single entity. We should see the markets as being a manipulation of price and that we need to find out who is the winner in basically the buyers and the sellers, who's going to be the winner of that trend transaction. And this often comes in those market periods of preparation. So what I want to do now is I want to get into the charts together and we're going to have a look at a couple of examples of live Wyckoffs that have happened. So let's go through here and I've got a couple of examples. One was the euro versus pound. Now you might think, well, Wyckoff only works in day trading or it only works in swing trading or it only works in any of these other things, or maybe it only works on daily timeframes. I'm going to be using relatively higher timeframes down to the two hour here today, but that doesn't mean that it's only on those. It happens on the smaller ones as well. It's just that they're not as impactful because of course, building a position can take some time. Now, if we think about it here, what we have is we have a market that's selling off. A market comes down, it builds some kind of position, basically some kind of supply. It sells off comes down, sells off, rallies up. Now, in a lot of people's worlds, when this market rallies here, it's moving towards being a short into a buy. And there are a couple of reasons why that could be. You can see here we have the 20 moving average, which is this red daily line, and the market is closed above that, often considered a positive sign. Pretty, pretty powerful concept as well at that. Now, the next thing we're looking for is if that has occurred, then the market generally is going to move back at some point, but we'll often see rallies from that point. So a lot of people are going to be turning bullish here. Now, what Wyckoff figured out was that often we would have some form of 
selling climax, which is basically this area here, and we would have a level of schematic. So effectively, a market would do very similar preparation because there was only one way to build liquidity. And to build liquidity, we had to build it over time. So basically, it took ages for us to to prepare the amount of liquidity that we need if we have to get a trillion dollars in the market or billions and billions of dollars in the market. We can't just do it like that, like we can. It takes time to prepare that position. So what would often happen is we would get kind of some kind of sell-off, then we would have like an automatic rally. We would have a sell-off that would come into the selling climax, and then we would have a rally. And that rally would often make it past the previous high. So we would effectively make a higher high. In turn, this would often often get people to buy into the market. And rightfully so, it's it's a very important change of trend for markets. And it's something that we are always looking for. But when the market comes down and it hits this next low, this is actually a trap. And what Wyckoff was often getting at was to wait for these traps. Now, as a trader, I sometimes say that it's best to you know, be in a trade if you think you have replication. So that is patience, react, don't predict. So what we're looking for in many ways is a change of trend, which we do see here at an important zone, which I could say is arguable when you go over to the left-hand side and start looking at the key level. And that if you do buy in and then the market traps you and goes down, you don't look at that as, oh, I lost the position, this sucks, the market's unfair and everything's unfair. Instead, you start to think about it as an opportunity. And I think in 2024, people have to start looking at it from what happened to this zone? Did this trap other people into making you know, stop loss hits at that seller's climax where basically it pushes lower? What happens next becomes important. And do I have some form of replication from this point? So we basically have a schematic of entry. When the market goes underneath this level, underneath the selling climax, it triggers people's stop losses, effectively hunting them. Now, if we have a buy that's here, for us to close that buy turn, we're always going to need to sell it back into the market. If we have a buy, it becomes a sell. If it becomes a sell, someone has to take that other side. And that side would, of course, be therefore a buy. So you can see why if someone's trying to build a nice position, it would be advantageous for them, especially if they need a lot of liquidity, to push slightly lower lows. And what you'll often notice is you get these kind of what I like to call one, two, three style lows, which is where you get a trap, where you get the first selling climax, it comes up, it hits the low, and then it hits the low. And I find a lot actually stop at three. Do we have you back right now, Ty? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Perfect. So basically, the yeah, the, these a lot of these lows, traps stop at three. And the reason is because you know it's hard to push these markets down each time, but it is quite profitable to do so to get your position. Now, once this occurs, what you'll often see in markets is, especially if it's the final one, you'll often see quite a quick reversal of the market from those points. And that's because the markets get excited. Basically, huge amounts of transactions come in, someone gets wiped, they get stop loss hunted, and then the market gets very excited to push back in. So as you see this story pr prepare itself and play out in the markets, if you do have the patience to react to that once it occurs and not predict it, you can be profitable from Wyckoff theory. So we've got a couple of different ones that are setting up and have set up, et cetera. But in this case, what we're looking for often is a bit of a reversal. And you can see here we have what we call two, well, actually three wick rejections. One, two, three. What I'll do is I'll zoom this in. So Ty, wicks are pretty important in markets, aren't they? Do you want to talk to everybody about why you think wicks are relatively important? Absolutely, because they're giving us the range of what's actually happening in that period. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're on a daily chart or a weekly chart or even a five-minute chart. What the wicks are giving us is the bigger the wick, actually, the more um, action there was throughout that candle. Of course, the opens and the close of that particular candle or bar are super important. But if the wicks uh, are a little bit exaggerated on the buy side and on the sell side, depending on uh, which ones they are, and sometimes both, it's really telling you um, the tug of war that was actually in place throughout that trading period, whatever that period was. So when we're seeing a lot of wick action, what that's really telling us is that the, there was a lot of indecision. The, bu the buyers were in control at some point, the sellers were in control 
at another point, but it, it ended up somewhere in the middle. So the Wicks are giving us all the information we need to know that there is a lot of indecision at that particular level. So when you get two or three uh, consecutive candles where you've got very big um, action inside the Wicks, you know that there was a lot of volatility throughout that period. Again, it doesn't tell us a lot about the volume, but what it is telling us is at some point, um, each of the uh, the buyer or the seller was in control of the price, but it finished somewhere in the middle. So indecision is really what we're looking for. And it's very important to remember that they're only really um, relevant at important zones like we're talking about here. A wick in the middle of nowhere uh, generally sort of is insignificant. But when it's at an area of support where we know we've already seen three bottoms here where price has actually already consolidated at this level and we know that there's buying and selling pressure, Wicks at these levels are extraordinarily important because they're giving us clues as to what the market is going to do. What we know for sure or with relative confidence is that it's not going to stay where it is for very much longer. Yeah, and 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 when it's not going to stay at where it is for very much longer and we start to get specially reversals is you can kind of look at this and say, okay, well, there's a wick down, a wick down, a wick down. I've, I put it as one, two, three. Then the market sells off to a new low. Okay, at that point, someone could say to you, what do you think is going to happen next? The argument would be that it's going to keep shorting. But then the question would be, would you place that short? And the answer might be, no, I wouldn't because I don't have edge on that particular trade. And that's probably the correct answer. But you could say, but if it comes back against that, I know what most people would have been doing. They would have been shorting. It was a fairly clear trade. And all of a sudden, something's changed. Now, the reason I've zoomed this in, although we don't have volume here for this particular one, is these reversals often come off volume. And that volume is usually some kind of economic news. So what you can sometimes do is you can kind of bring the news in. This is the tip, one of the tips for today, is that when you're looking at Wyckoffs, when you're looking at setups, often the reversals, the traps, the stop loss hunts will actually be happening through news events. And it's pretty simple why. News events allow markets to make large moves. If you think about it, what do they do? They bring in interest, they bring in liquidity and they bring in the ability for markets to push in directions. So around news events, if you ever wondered why a market might go off in one direction and then off in the opposite direction, it's often because it's grabbed liquidity. And this is the composite man at work in these markets. And this is why we say patience, react down, don't predict. Some of my best trades have happened after news events. And in fact, I almost never trade before news events tights or almost always after, whether it be uh, some kind of you know news uh, event trap or it even be some type of hedging hedging capability any of those types of things that you're looking at doing or crediting or whatever these types of things you would usually do these after the news has come out and it's because then we can be more certain on what the trap was and if we get replication that's awesome the problem Absolutely. is and this is always the problem in trading is that it's going to come down to having patience because there are a lot of fizzes so you come into a news event and you think, yes, this is going to be the one, it's going to do what I think it's going to do. And it sells and it keeps selling off. And you're left saying, well, I wish I could have got an opportunity there. Sometimes you're not going to be able to have one. But if you get one that does what you think and you're playing chess with the market and you have strategies involved in that, then you can say, ah, I know that's what I expected. And because in the heat of the moment, you've got to put yourself in other people's shoes. You're cool, calm and collected because you had a plan. But think about what other people do. Think about what you did when you first got into trading. If it goes off and shorts in one direction when news comes out, I want to ask the chat right now, what would you have usually done? If the market's selling off, it looks like it's breaking out, every, the news looks bad on surface, everything's bad, would you short? Well, I think the chat's going to answer, Ty, with one resounding, yes, you would, uh, because of the way a chart is. If it then reverses from that point and breaks above like it did on this candle here, this is actually, in my opinion, the beginning of an extremely good Wyckoff trade because it comes with a lot of those senses. It comes with the selling climax. It comes with two traps. And then we can assume that this is a huge shift in momentum from the market because it's, be, it's gone above those wicks. And generally speaking, this will actually be news related. So if you ever come in, let's say you came in the next day and you came in and you saw this, you could say, all right, what happened over here? Go and have a look at the old news. Good little tip there. Oh, okay, it was a news event, big volume, let's say. It happened. Okay, well, I see this rejection. Get above here again. I'm going to trigger, stop loss, go long. Looks like a wipe off to me. 
So that's something that you can start to work into your strategies for 2024 is go back and have a look at some of these traps and see whether they've been happening around news. Now, uh, I think that's a really important thing, Ty. You've made mistakes on trading news, so have I. Uh, there's always going to be those types of things. And it looks like a few people have said, yes, they've made mistakes mm -hmm. trading news. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty common. Yeah. I think it's very common, especially when you first start trading. And look, really, realistically, uh, I think if you, it's probably um, almost a, a given that you're going to try and attempt to trade the news when you first start, start trading. But we learned very quickly that you're better off letting it settle down, mm -hmm. let the market craziness get out of the way. Yes, you can get lucky, uh, and often people do, but quite often you're going to get burned on the next one, aren't you? The volatility yeah. just kicks in. And then eventually, when the market does settle down, though, if you are patient enough to wait for it to find its direction and find its speed, the better trades are generally always after. And then you can get into, yeah, let the market form some sort of resemblance of a trend uh, and let, let the market forces actually determine which way it's going to go rather than the, uh, the hysteria that often happens on some big news events. I, I think personally, uh, news is starting to be factored in a lot more and settling down. In the, uh, the good old days when we first started trading, Tom, uh, news was really news and um, the moves were extreme. Uh, even mm. just a, a standard red news could move the market two or 300 pips. Like it was wild. Uh, it was very, very wild. Uh, we do see it um, a little bit now, but nowhere near to the, to the extent that it used to be, especially around the quantitative easing. I remember those days. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, it's yep. oh, well, the quantitative easing was wild because you also had illiquidity. Uh, the last time I saw such illiquidity in the market was actually during the uh, pandemic time. And that was wild. I remember gold was chunking $15 hits. Like we were seeing gold move $15, $10, like, and it was just like one tick because it was so illiquid. Now, during that period of time was just a very strange period. But yeah, you just don't see that as much anymore. The market's actually way more liquid. And we're also seeing that happening around uh, the Christmas holiday period as well. Yeah. In the past, you usually, I almost thought every year we used to see some kind of wild big gap event that occurred, uh, the odd a few years ago. And, and I remember uh, so many of these. Uh, well, of course, there's heaps of them, but these illiquidity, Ill illiquidity events were, were pretty crazy. Anyway, it's all getting better, which is awesome for everybody out there that's a trader. And of course, this is why we look at it. Now, what I want to show you here was a Wyckoff inside of trend. So a lot of the time people think of Wyckoffs and what they think of is we have a Wyckoff at the end of the trend or Wyckoff at the beginning of the trend. But why can't it happen inside of the trend? Here we have a trend that's broken up to the upside. It's come down. It's rallied. It's come down. It's rallied. It's come down. One, two, three, which you'll notice here. So that three kind of sell off, a little bit of a tip often does occur like this with very mild new lower lows. But remember these lower lows are building a position and they're usually traps. So you can start to think about the one, two, three system a little bit there. And then we see a shift and that shift, of course, then gets the rally. And depending on which breakout you have, whether it's a breakout here, whether it's a breakout uh, actually in here would be where I'd be super interested in that particular trade or a breakout above this point in here, um, they're all very, very good. But you can see that it's painting that picture of that base that occurs. And that is usually that, Kind of selling climax concept, a rally into a drop into some kind of trap and a rally into some kind of trap. And then we're looking for the reversal off that. And it often happens after that third one. So that's another example. And Ty, you know, one of the courses that we have, uh, the Ultimate Trading Masterclass, you know, we talk a lot about this type of thing as well for swing traders, where as markets pull back, whether you're a pattern trader as well, and a lot of patterns like triple bottoms in some ways, can be almost seen as Wyckoffs. Um, what, what it is, is it's it, sometimes it's nice to see, like if you saw a double bottom inside of the trend itself, inside of the swing, they can be very, very powerful, can't they? Because it's yep. already trend as your friend. That's right. And you're just stacking exactly. in evidence on top of it. You are. When you have a prevailing trend, and, and really it can be as simple as, like we we're looking at a two-hour chart here, but what we could also understand is that the four-hour or the eight-hour or even the daily chart could be in a very, very strong uptrend, okay? So you see this pattern forming on a two-hour chart. You already know that you're in a very strong uptrend because the prevailing trend is already moving in that direction. So mm -hmm. you've got a, a fair bit of market force already in your direction. Then you see 
this particular setup on the smaller time frame on a two hour. And all you're really doing is looking actually for the evidence that the trend is going to continue. And then you've got all manner of force behind it actually pushing it. And that's when you're going to see the aggressive moves out of these areas. And they are little gold mines actually when you do identify them. And they do appear a lot more than people would think. I think the key is to understand what you're looking for and you can really scan the markets very, very quickly to identify the opportunities as they're forming, uh, or at the very least, uh, set some alerts to know when they are starting to form. They may not be ready to go, but you have to have that patience. Yeah, so speaking of things forming and, you know, ready to form and stuff, obviously, look, again, you know, you, you, you're complex there, and again, one of the things we want to talk about here is, you know, disclaimer, we're obviously using this for um, educational purposes, but... The thing that you're often looking for in markets is the signs that you've seen in replication. And I think one thing that's really important that all of us as traders and investors consider is that you'll never have a 100% system. It's just not no. going to happen. There will be some level of risk. It is what it is. You're going to take statistics into advantage. So really, whenever you're considering any strategy, you've always got to say, okay, well, I'm going to take um, a certain level of risk here therefore i need to place uh, you know whatever i'm comfortable with whether that's ten dollars whether that's twenty dollars whether that's two hundred dollars or even two thousand dollars or even more um the one thing you're really thinking about is you're saying okay well i'm going to play the long game that is if i did this a hundred times how many times would i win out of that hundred if the times were 70 out of 100 that you were winning then that would be awesome but sometimes you will go on losing streaks so in this situation you have a market that's very very bullish and it's, I always say that if a market is super bullish, the S&P 500, just for an example here, if the market is super bullish, it's a freight train, yeah? yeah, or super bearish. It's trying to stop a freight train. Now, often you will get what we call like a change of trend, which is occurring kind of here on this chart. And because you're trying to stop a freight train, it can take a little bit more than that, can't it? So what I often do see when it comes to Wyckoffs is it'll be more common that Wyckoffs will form after incredible moves. So that is incredibly big short moves, incredibly large big moves on the upside. We'll often get these one, two, threes, these kind of Wyckoff concepts. So we can have here maybe a buyer's climax, a UT kind of example, or maybe this is even before the BC. A lot of people get caught up in these terms, by the way, Ty, and they look at schematics and they say, oh, it has to be, you know, this is the AR, this is the the rally, this is the, the seller's climax, UT, et cetera. It doesn't matter. What you're generally thinking about is you're thinking about the positions. If a large player wanted to get as many positions as they want, as they could, if they push it slightly higher each time, which they did here in this circumstance, then they're each time liquidating people. And those people that were obviously, in this case, sellers, to reverse their position, they have to become a buyer because that's how you close a sell. Who would take the other side? In Wyckoff's terms, it was the composite man. So these are a couple little tips here that you start to see on markets, and they happen all over the place. This is a daily. You can see here that we've got a little high that happened the other day, 4,800. There's all sorts of things going on in this chart, a lot of complexity to it, but it is starting to look a little bit weaker. Now, you don't really know that it's going to be weaker until, of course, it busts through the low, and then you know the strategy would be generally to move towards your next level of what you thought equilibrium was in the market or where you thought the next move for the market would be. But you, you might assume there's a lot of volume, let's say, through this long. That's not true. In fact, the volume there is actually quite thin. So the chances are that if markets do end up trying to do shorts tie, that Wyckoff will move towards the next level where it builds its biggest position. And this is kind of the way markets move, isn't it? Absolutely. And look, it's all, it's also uh, the, the good thing about, you know, pattern recognition and price action, what we talked about earlier, is that the, uh, they actually form themselves. You can see, you know, for obviously, this could be the makings of a double top as well. Um, yeah, And if it does break that neckline, uh, funny enough, the next real level of support is going to be what the double tops take profit would actually be normally. So when you're getting... Um, yeah, basically ideas that are shared uh, throughout uh, different trading ideas. Like you, you've got um, a Wyckoff theory here that could be playing out the top, uh, a market that's getting tired, uh, a potential double top pattern that could break. If it does break, its potential take profit is around the next level uh, where we would expect the market to go. And like Tom said, with very um, little or, um, or next to 
no volume getting up there because that was over a very interesting period of the year that we know there's not much volume. There's not a lot of um, yeah, support there to actually catch it before it does really get to that sort of 45, 70 to 45, um, 80 area. So it's all about looking for all of the different reasons why a market may do something. And, and the more you can combine into the one idea, you got to remember the more people that can see it, the more chance there is that the trade will actually work out. Yeah, and it just keeps getting you know better when you think about it from the perspective of uh, stacking those ideas and stacking concepts. As you learn more about technical analysis, whether you're a Wyckoff fan, whether you're a supply demand fan, whether you're a support resistance fan, a pattern fan, or somebody that uses uh, Elliott Wave, you're actually going to find that when they all stack together and you get a couple of different theories happening, and more importantly, it's not the general consensus, which would be pretty nice, you do tend to get fairly nice moves. And this is something that we're always looking for on these markets and we're always, you know, paying a lot of attention to. Some other things that have happened over time, Ty, I just thought I'd kind of load this up just so you can see that it's not just, you know, the US markets or currencies or anything like that. It can also happen over a longer period of time. So this is a classic one that we spoke about a very, very long time ago. And it's got those classic new high pushes that happen on the weekly where they push down and it builds a position for a while. Now, obviously, uh, you could say, well, you know, it's it shorted because in this time it was it was a piece of news that also shorted it through. But it's very arguable, and I, I think it was going to happen anyway. That this market was setting up for a very long time to get towards that short. The key here is whether this is this uh, German 40 DAX or whether it's the Russell 2000 or whether it's, you know, copper at some points or anything else is that oftentimes markets, remember, come after points of preparation. And if you do see that preparation sort through and you do have an inkling into that idea and you start to see these trades come in, they can be very, very, very good and very replicable. And remember, it happens on five minutes because five-minute charts sometimes have to set up. It happens on 15-minute charts. It happens on one hour. It happens on two hours. Now, Blake's got a comment here, which basically says, and by the way, if you do enjoy these types of streams, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out. Give it a like or a, a starship, I think, on one of the platforms we're streaming to at the moment. And Blake says here, I thought I figured out a brilliant strategy for news at one point. It turned out I was mistaken. It wasn't uh, straddling, was it, Blake? <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember doing straddling. That was a bad idea. Um, yeah, look, it, we have been on both sides trading, of that, haven't we? <laughs> news trading is so quick. And with algorithms being at the rate they're at right now, with execution being where it's at, with the level of information, Tyron mentioned before that the moves are not as large as they used to be sometimes off news. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that news travels so quickly in the day and age that we're in right now that a lot of it's already packed in. There's a lot of calculations being made to you know, kind of prepare algorithms to what the eventualities are. And more importantly, Ty, I think a lot of news is being packed into price. They're correctly uh, figuring out what's going to happen a lot more of the time uh, before it actually happens. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that, you know, like you're right, look, you, you'll notice that the moves are yeah, they're, they're filled with trades now. And you're right, algorithms have a, a knack. Yeah, all of the automated trading does have a knack of sort of infiltrating that. But news is very, very fast to the consumer now. So, yeah, it's it's. I think in my mind, it actually makes it even more of a gamble than it used to be in, in many ways, Tom, because really, mm. you know, it's even more unpredictable now. So yep. being uh, being more patient and waiting for the the breakout move in the direction of where the market really wants to go you know, maybe half an hour or an hour after the news is the way to go if you are going to trade it. Yeah, we, we learned that lesson. Look, we've done it all. You know, we, we've been um, at the forefront of, you know, throwing the lasso around the candle um, and catching a big wick, haven't we? Um, and yep. it's worked for us and it's worked against us. Um, but we learned very, very quickly that that is not the way uh, to become a successful and profitable trader in the long term because what we're looking for is a reliable strategy that can be replicated consistently and with a, a great deal of confidence. Uh, and I've got to say, and uh, I haven't traded news in a very long time, Tom, but I remember the days when we did, and it used to be a very nerve-wracking experience. Yeah, well, that's another thing, Ty. The stresses that can be there, especially on some of the smaller time frames. Sometimes in, a lot of people you'll notice if you talk to people that have been around trading for a long time, there aren't too many that stay short time frame for 
long, long periods. And a lot of that has right. to do with the built, you know, maybe equity that doesn't need to do that. But it's because cutting your teeth on those timeframes can be very time consuming and you must set the alerts. You know, the market doesn't care about your time frame. It cares about no. uh, its opportunity when it happens. So I think one of the things with Wyckoff and another that kind of another tip that I want to bring in today was there's no harm when you're analyzing something. Say you see this and you see the one and you see the two. Well, you might want to just set a little alert for a new high. Set an alert. If a new high happens in the future, set it for 90 days, 120 days, whatever. Maybe even set for a few weeks if that's what you're looking at. Set the alert. If you do get the alert, then you can come in and say, okay, well, now I'm going to set an alert for it to go to the new, go for the low after that. And then I'm going to reassess it in the morning or reassess it next time. The point is, is that you're using your time wisely. And what most traders do is we all sit in front of the charts and we watch the tick chart and we watch the one minute, we watch the five minute, we watch the 15 minute. And when you watch all those inadvertently high, it's either forcing a trade or it's because you're too heavy on your contracts uh, yep. and you're stressed. And stress and being too heavy on the contracts is not a good way to be. That, so that, is, not, off, that is not a good way no, to be. <laughs> no, it's not a good way to be. So it's not really where we want to be sitting in terms of trading. And I think that when it comes to everything here and everything in terms of trading, the best thing for us to do is to just, you know, to create replication, to create setting alerts, to create a system where every day you're consistent and you're much better off like any job to be consistent or anything you do in life to be yeah. consistent than to be flurry, like, you know, to work, you know, to go really, really fast at something. It's always 100%. the consistent people that, that make the money. Yeah, and the ones uh, that invest the right amount of time into their trade. Like, you know, do you really think that Warren Buffett or, you know, uh, Drucker Miller are sitting in front of their charts, you know, 20 hours of the day? I'll guarantee you that they're not. Uh, they yeah. are basically doing a system that they know works. Um, I bet you there are days where they don't even open the charts because they don't have to. Uh, and, and that's the key. Don't forget, trading lifestyle is a lifestyle that you want to work for you, not you being a slave to the charts. So it's very, very important to maintain that. Uh, and it, yes, you do need to cut your teeth. You need to look at a lot of charts uh, as you're learning. But the key is to actually step away from the charts and do less. Uh, in trading, Tom, less is definitely more when it comes to chart time because people do get caught up in wanting to trade uh, for the time investment that they've put in. We say it a lot and it happens a lot. So just be really mindful of that. Yeah. And when the, when, and just with Wyckoff as well, whether it's a stock, whether it's a commodity, whether it's a currency, whether it's a crypto or anything else, just remember that it happens on all of them because effectively the composite man, which is the entity, of course, we look at as the market, they need to build positions. And remember the footprints of building a position, especially if you need billions of dollars to be entered, will look relatively similar and there's only you can't you have to get your your fill so the great thing about wyckoff the great thing about being a reactionary trader that's waiting specifically for traps is that you're not going to be the trap you're not going to be the trappy or you're going to be more like the trappy except that you're not using your money to do that instead you're waiting you're seeing what they do and then you're going to strike into the market so hopefully that helped you today. If you did enjoy today's session, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. We had some great questions there as well coming through. A question I fielded a little bit earlier was about Wyckoff tie. And basically it was, look, I like Wyckoff. I want to use Wyckoff on my timeframes, but I, I tend to see Wyckoff form more on dailies than anything else. Uh, is that true? Well, the answer is yes, it will form on those timeframes a little bit more. And the reason is purely because that's where you often have the bigger traders. And yep. when you think about it, to build billion dollar positions, you can't necessarily do it in five minute charts. But what will happen is that you'll often see uh, this, this daily kind of setup give you trades on the five minute yep. charts. So it'll actually Correct. show you key levels that you need to be focused in on, and then you're going to trade on those through the intraday. That's really the way you should be using it. Big volume is entered in um, in a span of days and weeks, not um, hours. So that's why you're going to see a lot more of those on the daily because they are effectively building positions that can take several days and sometimes weeks to actually build. Uh, but like Tom said, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do in between while those positions are building in the smaller time frame. It's just that's why it's so important to look at all of the time frames, the bigger ones, the smaller ones, and understand what the market is doing overall. It was a good question and um, yeah, very important to understand. 
All right. Well, from all of us here at Pepperstone, we want to wish you a great week. Remember, we do come back every week for these sessions. So if you're interested, links in the description down below as how to sign up and be alerted to those uh, sessions every single time. We hope that 2024 is going to be a great start for you. We believe position trading is going to be one of the big things to do. And also check out our back catalog as well of all the different indicators we've used. From myself, Thomas, and obviously from Tyrone, we want to thank you so much. And Ty, do you have any parting words of wisdom for anybody out there? No, just um, only that now you're you're all uh, atoned to Thomas's favorite topic. Uh, and hopefully when he does discuss it at every single webinar that we do for Pepperstone, at some point you have a little bit more of an understanding of what that actually is because it is a very, very important part of market structure. So I think hopefully... It's a lot of information today, so don't be afraid to go back and watch the uh, the replay. Uh, the YouTube channel is very, very extensive for Pepperstone. They've got very, uh, very broad uh, topics. We've covered a lot of topics over the years, but this one in particular may need a bit of revision. So if you think you've missed it or you need a bit more understanding, don't be afraid to go watch the replays because they are very, very valuable. So thank you very Excellent. much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. See ya.